So the question is, uh, can you talk more about sort of the, the initial entrepreneurial process, essentially? Um, so, you know, the, one of the biggest assets I had was the fact that there was a thesis requirement at Princeton, in all honesty, <laughs> because it sort of, it, it was my opportunity to develop the plan and argument for the creation of this organization. And I think I'm not sure I would have spent four months and done lots of research and developed, you know, at least what I thought at the time was a well thought through plan for the launch of this if I hadn't had that. And I mean, this is sort of obvious, but maybe not to everyone. I mean, I think really taking the time to do the research and develop the plan initially is, you know, clearly step one. Um, I think. I mean, I say all the time, too, and it sounds maybe flippant, but I really, really, truly mean it. I mean, I think the other big asset I had was my inexperience. And, um, like, I didn't know what was impossible. Um, and I think there are just, there's much to be said for that. And, and it's, it's, there's also much to be said for experience. But I don't think we would have Teach for America today if I had known at some level more than, than I knew then. So embrace, the point is embrace your inexperience. Don't be held back by it. It can be an asset. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, the, the other thing I would say, I think, is, you know, in order to get this off the ground, I needed a lot of help. Um, and in particular, and most dauntingly at the time, I needed a lot of money. Um, so I spent my first, that seemed like the most daunting piece of this to me. Like I developed this plan. I had this idea that it just had to start with 500 people. I mean, that was based on various convictions around conveying that this was a, you know, a movement and not a little program. I needed to surround it with a sense of urgency and national importance, but that was going to cost two and a half million dollars. And where was that money going to come from? So I spent the first, after I got the initial seed grant, um, I spent the, from one of those people quoted in the Fortune article I mentioned earlier. Um, and I mean, I just wrote letters to these people blindly. Those people and some other randomly selected corporate executives, like the CEOs of major companies I'd heard from. I mean, talk about the power of inexperience. Some of those people actually met with me. I mean, you know, so just got to embrace the inexperience. Um, but I spent the first three months after I graduated from college just trying to get into doors. Of course, this is more challenging than it seems now. You know, I would send 100 letters and get, like, a meeting or two, but then work out from those people to try to meet others. And I think, you know, I got lots and lots and lots of no's. And I think one thing I came to see and probably just knew intuitively is this is a search for allies. You actually don't need everyone. You need a few true allies. And I, I feel like my whole last 20 years has been a search for allies. And, you know, what I ultimately realized, too, is that, you know, the people you meet in that first summer may say no and no and no for the next 12 years, and in year 13 could be your biggest enabler. And I wish I'd known that then, um, because I would have been much nicer to everyone and kept in touch with everyone. Uh, but it really is a true, I mean, gosh, it's just a law of life I've now discovered.